Okay, so in this video, I'll be solving example 4.1 called flow in a bend. And what I'll be doing is using the Euler equations that we developed in video number 10 to see how we can relate a pressure reading to find the velocity of the flow in this bend. But it's important to keep in mind that the Euler equations are really meaningful for us because they tell us that flow accelerates when you're going from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone, and vice versa, flow decelerates when you're going from a lower pressure to a higher pressure. So that's really the key of the Euler's equations. And they showed us that for these conditions, we won't have any change in pressure across straight streamlines. But they also can be used to calculate a relationship between pressure and velocity. And that's what I'll be showing in this example here. Okay, so we've got flow through a bend in a duct here. So it says the flow rate of air at standard conditions in a flat duct is going to be determined by installing pressure taps across a bend. So the pressure taps are shown here at point one and point two. Okay, so you want to measure the flow and the way you do that is to put these little pressure taps on there, right? So it gives us a fairly simple way of, of measuring the flow. It says the duct is 0.3 meters deep and 0.1 meters wide. Inner radius of the bend is given 0.25 meters. And then it says if the pressure difference between the taps is 40 millimeters of water, compute the approximate flow rate. So in a nutshell, what we're saying here is we have a pressure difference and we need to figure out a flow rate, right? So it's our classic example of converting between pressure and velocity. So we'll first write our governing equation and we're gonna recognize we look at a plan view of this bend right here, so an overhead view. We can see we basically have some curvature, we're following streamlines through this duct, and we want the pressure, or we'll measure the pressure normal to this flow, and we want the velocity. So what does that tell us? That tells us it's just the last equation we derive there. That's our governing equation there. Okay, so I'll write that out. Euler's equation in the normal direction. Okay, so I'll write out our assumptions here. Okay, so these are our assumptions, and we know that to use Euler's equation, we have to make a, a number of assumptions. So we'll assume frictionless flow, that it's incompressible, and that it's uniform flow at the point of measurement there. None of those are, are actually true. There are approximations we're making to be able to correlate these pressure values to a velocity. So we'll remember that in this case, this measurement is giving us a very rough idea of what the flow rate actually is. But in this case, that approximate value is better than nothing. Okay, so what we're measuring is the pressure, and we know the pressure's changing in the R direction. So we simplify this out, classic separate and integrate again. So that goes from a partial derivative to a full derivative because we know pressure is only a function of R in this case. And again, we know that because we're applying Euler's equation and it says, you can only have a pressure change normal to the streamlines if there's a curvature. So we know all the pressure change there is due to that curvature. So separate and integrate. So I'll write this square root sign as that little half exponent there. Now we're almost done. We're given all these values or we can look them up in tables. The only hiccup left here is what the heck's going on with the pressure? So they gave us the pressure as 40 millimeters of water. What is the deal with that? How can pressure be given as a distance? So this is our first encounter here of what's known in the field as head. So this is where pressure is given as pressure head. And what that is, is we've seen in a previous chapter how we can correlate the depth of fluid to a pressure value, right? So what this is saying is the pressure is 40 millimeters of water. So that's saying it's the pressure that's equivalent to the rho GH value when you're dealing with water and it's 40 millimeters. So it's a bit of a throwback to thinking of like manometers, right? So if you measure that height in the manometer, you'd see 40 millimeters of water so we know to turn that into a pressure value, we got to do rho GH on that. So I'll scroll back down and, and show that calculation out here.
Okay, so we just replace our P2 minus P1 there with the row GH value that we're given. Therefore, we simplify like this, and I'll go ahead and sub everything in here. All right, that's the velocity. We're not asked for the velocity though, we're asked for the flow rate. We've assumed uniform flow. As I mentioned, that's not a good approximation. And that'll be the focus of a later section where we look at flows in ducts. But for now, let's assume it's representative of an average flow across the channel. So let's go ahead and sub that in. Those dimensions are given and we keep our units of course to make sure we're on track for our calculations here. Okay, pretty neat stuff, right? We get an approximate volumetric flow rate just by putting two pressure taps in these ducts here. Really solid illustration there too of the relationship between pressures and velocities, how we can often use one to figure out another and vice versa. Bye-bye.